How do we start? So, my personal preference is to start from the one that's closest to the output block. And I would ideally like to analyze this particular part of the circuit first. But the problem is there are too many interconnections here. Okay? So, I somehow have to break this interconnection without actually changing the nature of signal that is entering GP. Okay? So, that's my first goal. I'm going to repeat again. I want to start closer to the output. Okay, this looks like a loop that I can solve. And the problem is too many signals getting added and multiplied in this particular <coughs> region. So somehow I want to split this region in a way that doesn't change the signal that's entering G3. So let's try to do that. So I have Let me look at this particular block first. G2. K5. K6. signals that are getting added, getting multiplied by K6 and getting added here. So I'm just going to move K6 into these two blocks. And so now the signal, the original signal, gets multiplied by K6 here. This signal gets multiplied by K6 here. They get added and then they get added to this particular block. So I haven't really changed the signal that is entering this plus sign. Is that clear? Yes. So, is the block above G2, is that K6 or K5? That is K5. That is K5. Let me... K5. This is K6, this is K5. Okay. Yes. Can you explain again how K5 goes into K6? Okay. So, I have a K6 here. This gets multiplied to the signal coming in here and the signal coming in here, added together. Okay. Right? So now I multiply, uh, the, so this is the signal that gets multiplied to K6. This signal gets multiplied to K6 here, and then they get added and enter okay. this particular block. And it's the same signal, I haven't changed the signal. But it seems to give us a, but now I'm using two separate blocks for K6 instead of one. I think it's G3. It's not G1 or G3 though. Oh yeah, of course. This is G3. This is H1. Yeah, everything is fine. Okay. Now, uh, this is still a problem. This is still a problem, so what am I going to do to address these two blocks here? Any thoughts what I can do? So remember, okay, let, let me call this signal x1 and this signal x2 and this signal x3. 
so and this is my x1 plus x2. How can I split these blocks such that the signal entering here is x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4? Okay. Let's uh, try this idea. I have G2, I have K5, K6. Plus, plus, K6, K3. Now, through this uh, method, I all, all, the only thing I have to make sure is that the signal entering G3 remains the same. There is no change in the signal getting into G3. So let's look at that. This is my X1. This is my X3. So this is X1 plus X3. This is X2. This is X4. And so here, I have X1 plus X3 plus X2 plus X4. So the signal entering G3 is the same as <coughs> the signal entering G3 in this particular block. X2 to X1 
So if it simplifies to that, how do they come up with the original diagram? So this diagram would be uh, something that, let me explain it further. So this is a physical system, mm -hmm. okay? Some of these blocks are natural, it's already in place. Some of the blocks are something that you would design, okay? Let's say this gain K5 is something that you would design. Uh, actually, the book says it's some pipe control, or pipe flow control problem or something like that. I don't quite know how it fits in there because the problem description is not there. But you can imagine this being a motor, this being a storage, this being some gain that you can design, this being something else, this one being some other system within that pipe flow control, this being a sensor, this one would be another sensor and so on. Okay. 
So some of these systems are already given, it's provided, and this is a natural progression of that system. So something will get in, it will get transformed, then it will get to the second stage, then it will get transformed, then it's right there. And you only have a few of these blocks that you can actually pick um, according to your specification. Yes, so I think your key need at the end should be a G3. Of course. And also, when K5 and K6 combine on the original diagram at the top, at the top, at the top this, yeah, is that a, a sum? This is a sum. Yeah, so down here we have K5, K6 as what looks like a product. Oh, so this K5 signal is entering K6 and then it gets modified. So two cascaded systems, they get multiplied to each other. Remember we did this yesterday? D1, D2. This is the same as D1, D2. So it's the same idea here. So it seems like the sum of H1, K5 should go through K6. And you look at the top of H1. Up higher, oh, H1? Yeah, H1 goes up to feed that sum where K5 comes in? Yes. And then goes down into K6. Shouldn't H1 also be multiplied by K6? Uh, no. So that's uh, so. Let's okay. So let's go again from here and trace all the steps. Okay. So this is the system. I want to start from this side, closer to Y of S. It looks very complicated. So that's the first thing we want to tackle. So this is a zoomed-in diagram where I have removed K6 from here. And I've added a K6 block here, and I've added a K6 block there. Okay. Now, the so this K5 and K6 are cascaded. Therefore, I can just write it as K5 K6 here. Now, the only problem is this particular part, where a lot of signals are getting added, and they are all entering G3. So somehow I need to break these additions apart in a way that the system is tractable, but at the same time, I'm not changing the nature of signal that's entering V3. Okay, so this was one way of splitting the two systems separately. So I added X1 to X3 and in a separate block, and then I added X2 and X4 in a separate block. Okay, and the reason why I did that was X2 and X4 are coming from Y of S, whereas X1 and X3 are coming from this particular block. So I just want to separate the signals coming from separate blocks or separate uh, sources differently. So that's what I did here. Now, this Y is getting multiplied by K6 to give X2. Y is getting multiplied by H1 to give X4. So I can, and these X2 and X4 is getting added under this, in this adder. So I'm just going to add the two blocks underneath. So, so then I get x2 plus x4 right here, which is entering v3. Okay? And so now, I've just combined all those diagrams piece by piece, and I've drawn this big diagram. Oh, the other thing is, this h2 gets multiplied by y of s and enters with a negative sign. This k4 gets multiplied by y of s and enters here as a negative, with a negative sign. So I just added H2 and K4, so and it entered with a negative sign, so that way the signal entering here is Y of S, and the signal getting outputted and entering this block is exactly the same as the signal from here plus the signal from here. Okay? Now this is much easier to ta tackle because I can find out the transfer function for that particular block, transfer function for this block, and then overall transfer function. So let's try and do that. And I'm going to erase this side. So any questions on this side of the board?
S. This is G1. This is G2 plus K5, K6. Um, how do you get G3 over 1 minus G3 times? So this is, uh, this is the block we had done in the previous class. So if you remember, we had done in the previous class H, mm -hmm. and we had derived the overall transfer function for this particular block to be G over 1 minus so you can, uh, this is something we did in the previous class. Okay. 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 So this block is something we studied in the previous class. So I just uh, wrote down the transfer function and put output relationship. If you look at this particular block, you have this signal going in, getting multiplied by G2, getting multiplied by K5, K6, and then getting added here. So I replaced it with an equivalent block, G2 plus K5, K6, because there is no feedback here. Everything is going into these two blocks and then getting added. And then I have G1 from before, and I have S2 plus K4 in the feedback loop. And this is my Y of S. Yes. Um, is there a reason that those two um, the adders are they separate for a reason or for the This is separate for the reason. Uh, remember, there were there were these four two adders here, mm -hmm. and I wanted to separate the signals that are coming from this side of the equation and the signals that are coming from this side of the block, and so. The way to transform it is, well, I came up with a way to transform it is in this way. Okay? Now you might come up with some other equivalent transformation. I don't know what you can potentially come up with. This is what I came up with, so I think this is a natural way to do it. But you could potentially come up with a different way of mixing the signal so that what's entering B3 doesn't get uh, K. Okay. Okay, now how do we solve this particular, I mean what would be the equivalent transfer function for this? So I just have to multiply G1 with this expression multiplied by this expression. So it's going to be a long expression, so I'm going to erase that part of the board.
given a complicated block diagram, I wanted to figure out what the transfer function looks like from the output to input, from the input to output. So this was the most complicated part. I needed to separate things around so that the signals coming in from this side get separated from signals that are flowing from the other side. So I transformed this particular block into these two adders uh, with appropriate gains multiplied to the signals in order to not change the nature of signals entering G3. Uh, and then I recognize that, okay, this is a feedback loop with positive feedback. I can replace it with the equivalent transfer function. This is adding two signals. So these are the two different transfer functions and then you are adding, multiplying it by signal, adding them up. I can just add the two transfer functions right here. I have G1 from before, and then in the feedback loop, I have K4 and H2 getting multiplied to the output and entering with a negative sign. So I added H2 and K4 and put a negative sign here, and so I have not changed the nature of signal entering into G1. Okay. <clears throat> so I get this equivalent block diagram uh, for the original system. Now, in this case, you have three systems cascaded with each other, so I just have to multiply the three transfer functions. So I get this. The feedback loop remains the same, no difference. And then I can, uh, this is just a regular feedback problem, rather a feedback uh, control system, so here I have the equivalent transfer functions. Okay? Now, as controls engineer, so this is this is apparently some pipe flow control problem, so it's a complicated system. As a controls person, you will be asked, can you identify the gain K5 and K4 so that the overshoot is this much, the settling time is this much, the peak time is so and so. And then you will have to use whatever we are going to study in this particular class to figure out what should the optimal value of K4 and K5 look like. Okay, not optimal, but what should K4 and K5 look like so that all the specifications given by the system designer is met. Okay. Um, yes. For the K4, 
think are these domains? Yeah, usually in control case, usually the game. Yeah. And then does, is G usually like the controller and what's H? Oh, uh, H is usually, H stands for sensor, G stands for the transfer function of an actual system, and usually we use DC for the controller. Okay, so there will be a C size somewhere. So here I think the idea is just to use pure gains as control signals and not have some complicated transfer function for control signals. Sorry. Yes. What's H again? H is the sensing. Uh, you know, you have the you have the physical parameter that gets sent to a sensor, and then the sensor outputs some electric signal, right? So that's H basically measures or gives you that input output. Yes. So usually in uh, in uh, controls, we will usually take H to be equal to one. So you can actually measure what's getting output it from the system, okay? But it's not the case always. Yeah. How how difficult is this problem compared to like things we'd be asked to solve on a midterm or like homework and stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> and this was the best question in this class because I'm sure everyone has the same question as you have. So <laughs> it's not so. This is just something I do in the class, but this is not something I'll give you in midterm final exam. But I could give it in homework, uh, but not for midterm or final exam. Okay. So usually for midterms and final exams, my criteria is I should be able to do the entire thing in uh, one-fourth the amount of time assigned for the class. So for instance, the, the final exam for this class is going to be 105 minutes, I think. So I should be able to complete the solution in 25 minutes. Okay. However, I've been trying to reduce it, so hopefully I'll give you something that I can complete in 20 minutes. Okay. <laughs> something that you can do once? Yeah. So I'll give you five minutes the time to complete it. <laughs> I've gone through several iterations and I've figured out that sounds like very optimal. So I can differentiate between who is doing that and who is not. Uh, because finally I have to grade, right? I have to grade based on the criteria. So. Um, so that's all I have for today. Uh, my throat is not good, so I need to take some rest. Uh, next class, I'm going to talk about start with chapter four, feedback control systems, and now we are going to be getting progress. So far, we have been on Thank you all. Have a great evening.